Hey there, welcome back to the Dev All. I am Roman and this is the event sourcing do-it-yourself video series. In this episode, I want to talk about CQRS. I want to tell you why I think that CQRS is a really nice way to architect your applications. And I want to show you how CQRS actually works and how CQRS works in a message-based system. So we will be talking about how everything fits together. So without further ado, los geht's! All right. To give you a small motivation why we might want to build a CQRS and event source system, we will start with a classical system that we are used to build. So those kinds of system had a user interface and those user interfaces were able to send commands and queries to some kind of backend, some kind of server. And most of the time, the storage mechanism for those kinds of backend were a relational database. And this relational database was used for the read and for the write model of our application. So what does this mean? The read model is the model that was used to gather all the information that was shown to the user. So all kinds of different information on all kinds of different pages were collected with the help of some kind, most of the time, conceptual read model. The write model on the other side is the model that was used to get all the information that the application needs to actually decide if something is allowed, some action is allowed or not. So which is basically our domain model. The thing was now that for the read and for the write model, the same storage mechanism was used. So we only had one model to actually implement our reads and our writes. And this posed a lot of problems for us. So, for example, if we wanted to optimize for either reads or writes, most of the time we destroyed the optimization for the other part of the application. So, for example, in our writes, we don't want, or in our write model, we don't want a lot of duplicated information. Because if we have a lot of duplicate information, and we update one part of the application, we always need to think about if this kind of information, for example, a username or an address, is stored also in a different table or in another place of our system. So we normalize the database, um, put some foreign keys in there, and we're able just to store uh, one kind of information, just one. But for the read side, we actually like to have duplicate information because needing a lot of joints in a database table, so collecting a lot of information that was deduplicated together to actually show something to the user, it would be nice if we could just say select star from one table and not to collect all the information together. So if we optimized for a write, we destroyed the optimization for our read models or for the read side. And it was exactly the other way around. If we actually duplicated all the data to get a easy access to all the data, we destroyed the efficiency of our write model. Another problem that comes up from time to time is the addition of new requirements. So, for example, if we had new requirements that needed some kind of different collection of the data uh, in our system, it was sometimes hard to actually get the data efficiently out of this. It might needed us to use a lot of more joints and complicated queries to get the, the information actually out of our system. And furthermore, if one new requirement was to have some kind of full text search in our database, in our data, we needed to add a full text index to our tables, which might reduce the speed of our writing a lot. And this was not always possible in those kinds of systems. Okay, let's talk about CQRS. CQRS means Command Query Responsibility Segregation which means that we're trying to split up the responsibility for commands and for our queries. So instead of having just one model, we have multiple models for our reads 
and our writes in our system. So we have a read side in our system and we have a write side in our CQRS based system. And we still have a user interface, of course, and we still have some kind of storage mechanism. So when the user is actually doing something in the system, the user interface or the application sends a command to the right model of the system. So the right model is where the behavior resides. This is the place of the domain model. This is where all the constraints are checked within our application. And then this write model produces some kind of state somehow and stores it in the storage mechanism of this application. This storage mechanism is then used to actually project into different kinds of read models. So the state that is stored within our storage mechanism is in some way used to project into our read model. And this read model can then be queried, for example, by the UI if the user actually wants to see some data, some kind of information within the application. So this, of course, is a very hand wavy description. I didn't tell you how the state is stored, how the state is created, and how this projection me mechanism is implemented within the system. And we have many different possibilities for this, but in my opinion, this is where event sourcing comes into play and where event sourcing really shines. So let's have a look how event sourcing fits into this image. We want to implement our storage mechanism with an event store. And we want to use only events to represent the state of our application. This means that the write model, the domain model, the behavior of our application needs to create new events that will be appended to our event store. These events can then be published by our event store and our read model can be implemented as a simple event listener or simple event subscriber that are listening to those published events and update their internal state accordingly. The cool thing is now that we have done this, now that we have actually split up the read and the write model in our system, we can actually optimize for both of them at the same time. So the write model, it's just an append-only data structure, which is very fast to write to. We don't need any kind of normalization. We just take the information that was produced by our domain model and we append it to the current stream. On the read side, we can use whatever we actually need for reading. So we can use normal relational database table. We can write into some kind of document store. We can write into some kind of graph database. We can even write CSV files if we need them for reading. This is pretty cool. So how can we actually implement, for example, the new requirement that we need to show some different kind of data to the user. Well, we can just build more read models and we're done. So if we need some full text index, build more read models. If we need something different, build more read models. All this is nice. And the real cool thing with a CQRS based system is that we have not only conceptually differentiated between our read and our write models. So whenever we want to actually change or we have some new requirements for our application, we don't need to think about them at the same time. Just think about what you actually need. There is one more thing I want to talk about, namely which part of the application needs to be asynchronous and which part of the application needs to be implemented in a synchronous way. So the question is, do we want the whole system to stop when something is happening? Of course not. So when the user sends a command, others should still be able to query the system. When events are appended, the whole system should not come to a halt until this is done, even though this is very fast. When the event listeners or event subscribers are building a new read model or rebuilding it, we don't want to, the whole system to stop. 
And we don't want the whole system to stop when a user actually queries a system. So I think that these systems should be implemented as asynchronous as possible. And in my opinion, a good way to build a fully asynchronous system is a message-based system. So we, we are not actually calling some functions in our system, but we are sending messages to parts of our application and those parts can actually decide how or when to work with them. And the nice thing is that we already have some messages in our system, which are namely the events. But we could also make the other parts of our application message-based. So we could actually implement our commands and our queries not as function calls, but also as messages. And this enables us in the end to build a fully message-based system. And as a side note, when we have such a system, it is much easier to split up your system into different services that live in different places, like in the cloud or somewhere else. But we are not going to do this in this series. We are going to build a message-based UQRS event source system, which means we are going to build an event store with an event storage. We are going to build the command side for the write model, the command handling side. And we are going to build read models and query handlers for the read side. All right, cool. That's it for this episode. Still no code yet. Sorry. But I promise that in the next episode, we will actually write some code together. And we will be talking about queries and query handler and how to integrate them in our system. So I hope to see you there. Subscribe if you like this stuff. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.